What's going on everybody? I'm Johnny Brook. Welcome back to another Crafted Workshop video and I am super excited about today's project. So some of you guys might remember about a year ago I put out a river coffee table project video heavily inspired by Greg Klassen's beautiful work and it's still one of the favorite things I have ever built and is also by far the best viewed video on this channel. But one of the most frequent comments I got on that video was why didn't I use epoxy for the center river section rather than glass? And it's a pretty good question for me back then it was because Greg was using glass for his tables so I figured to kind of replicate that look, glass was the best choice, but epoxy has its own benefits and its own really cool look. So I ended up trading a guy for these two slabs that both already had straight edges on them and I knew it was time to do another river style piece. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. I had a lot of fun with this build, so let's go ahead and get started with the video. Before we get started with the build, I wanna give a quick shout out to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video and there'll be more on them towards the end of the video. The first step on this project was to flatten the cherry slabs, which was no simple task. These two slabs were incredibly twisted and I had to remove a ton of material to get them flat. Now, there are a bunch of ways to flatten slabs. You can actually buy them already flattened depending on where you're purchasing your slab. A router sled is another great inexpensive way to flatten a slab if you don't have access to a joint or a planer. But because these slabs were already in two pieces and they'd fit through my planer, I used my jointer and planer to flatten them. I started on the jointer, flattening as much of one side of the slab as I could with my 8 inch capacity jointer. I could then attach this flat area of the slab to a piece of MDF, which served as my planer sled for this project. And I used inch and a quarter screws since the bottom side of these slabs will never be seen in the final piece, but you could also use double stick tape if this was going to end up being a show surface. With the sled attached, I started passing the slab through the planer. And you can see that I had to put a bunch of pressure on the back edge of the slab to keep it from twisting in the planer. And this was because this board was just so twisted. And I just kept making passes until the top of the slab was totally clean and then I could remove the sled. After removing the sled, I flipped the slab over facing that newly flattened face towards the bed of the planer and then planed down the top of the slab until it was totally flat. I ended up removing about half of the thickness of these two slabs during this process and that's how twisted they were. I ended up with a final thickness of about an inch and a quarter. And I just repeated the same process for the other slab off camera. With both of the slabs flattened, next I needed to clean up the live edges. And the bark was just falling off of these slabs and would have made a total mess in the epoxy, so I removed that loose bark with the chisel, and then I smoothed out the edges using my random orbit sander. Next I needed to work on the form for the epoxy pour, and I used MDF. First I cut the bottom section of the form to size, accounting for the thickness of the sidewalls when making that cut, and I actually had the home center rip the full sheet of MDF to length, so I just needed to cut it to width at home. Next, I ripped the strips that would make up the sides of the form, and I made sure to add about half an inch of extra height to the sides just to account for any excess epoxy. Now, if I left the MDF as is and poured the epoxy, the MDF would just absorb it, so I needed to create a waterproof barrier on the MDF. I used Tyvek sheathing tape for this. I folded the tape over the bottom edge to make sure it was completely waterproof in case there was any leaked epoxy. Next, I applied the tape to the bottom of the form, making sure there was an overlap on each strip. While I'm adding the tape, let's talk about one of the sponsors of this week's video, Powermatic, the gold standard. I upgraded to the Powermatic PJ882 helical head jointer and 15HH helical head planer a few months ago, and it's been a total game changer for my woodworking. The surface finish off of these machines is absolutely amazing, and I know they will last me for many, many years to come. To learn more about these machines, check out the link in the video description below, and thanks to Powermatic for sponsoring this video. With all the inside faces of the form taped off, I started attaching the walls to the bottom of the form. I used inch and a quarter screws, making sure to clamp the sides in place to keep them from moving around, and also pre-drilled and countersunk the holes just to make sure I didn't split the MDF. And I just repeated this process for all four sides of the form, making sure there were no gaps under any of the sides. Next, I added a bead of silicone caulk to the inside corners of the form, and this will just keep the epoxy from leaking out of the form, and I used a caulk tool to clean up the excess caulk. And before adding the slabs to the form, I sprayed on a layer of mold release to keep the form from sticking to the epoxy. Also, I want to say a big shout out to my buddies Brad over at Fix This Build That and Joseph over at Out of the Woods Works. Both of their videos really helped me get this process down for building the form. I'll have links to their videos in the video description below if you want to go check them out. With the form ready, I cut the slabs to final length based on the inside dimensions of the form over at the miter saw and then added the slabs to the form. 
To keep the slabs from floating in the epoxy, I attach them to the form using screws from the underside, and I first clamped the slabs in place just to make sure they were nice and tight against the form, and then added inch and a quarter screws, making sure, again, to pre-drill and countersink the holes. With everything in place, I leveled the form just to ensure the epoxy was nice and even along the entire surface of the slabs. Finally, after all of that prep work, it was time for the big moment, the epoxy pour. So first I needed to calculate exactly how much epoxy I needed to mix, because this stuff is pretty expensive. To do this, I measured the inside area of the form, measuring the width, depth, and length of the area where the epoxy would be, and multiplying these three measurements gave me the area in cubic inches, and I just converted that number to liters. In total, I mixed about 18 liters of epoxy, and as I said in the intro, I was trying to replicate that blue-green color of the first river table I built, so I decided to do a two-color pour. The epoxy I used was Ecopoxy's liquid plastic, which is designed for this type of thick casting, and they recommend a two-to-one ratio for this type of work. For the coloring, I used Ecopoxy's pigments, using their blue in one bucket and their green in the other bucket, and I also added a little bit of their metallic pigment to each bucket as well. After adding the pigments, I mixed each bucket thoroughly for about three minutes each, and that metallic pigment really tended to clump up, so I made sure to mix it until there were no clumps left. Finally, the moment of truth had arrived, the big pour. So I poured the blue epoxy first, and I've got to say I was a little surprised by how light the color ended up looking. Next, I poured the green epoxy, starting at the other end, and luckily I left a little epoxy in the bucket in case I needed to make any color adjustments after that pour. And this really ended up being my saving grace because I was not digging the look of the blue and green right out of the buckets. They were just way too light and way too clear. So I added some more of the blue pigment and metallic pigment to that remaining epoxy, mixed it well, and then added that as the final pour and this totally made the look of the piece. The extra depth of color from that pigment and the mother of pearl look of the metallic pigment really made this river come to life. I used my mixing stick just to incorporate that last pour, adding some swirls and really trying to make the resin look like moving water, and then I took a second to admire the piece. A friend of mine said it looked like glacial melt and I think that's the perfect description. Absolutely gorgeous. So after letting the epoxy sit for a few minutes, I came back with a propane torch and just popped any bubbles that had formed on the surface and then gave the piece about three days to fully cure. Three days later. Once the epoxy had cured, I removed the form starting with the sides and even with that mold release, these were pretty well stuck to the epoxy, but a few taps with a dead blow mallet loosened them up enough to peel them off. With the sides removed, I could move on to removing the bottom of the form, which was a little more challenging. I pried the edges back around the entire perimeter of the piece and the bottom still wasn't budging, but a crowbar gave me a little bit more leverage and the bottom finally came off. Next, I needed to trim the edges to clean off that excess epoxy and also remove the residue left by that silicone caulk. For some reason, this stuff became a gooey mess during the curing process, so I just decided to cut it off rather than try to deal with it some other way. I used my track saw to trim the ends, but a circular saw on straight edge would work the exact same way. Next, I cleaned up the edges of the table saw, taking off about half an inch from each edge, and this thing was extremely heavy at this point. Moving it by myself was really awkward. With the edges trimmed, I started the sanding process, and I started on the bottom, sanding it with 80 grit sandpaper just to remove that excess epoxy. After flipping it over and upon closer inspection of the top, I noticed that the epoxy was about an eighth of an inch below the surface of the slabs, just from it seeping into all the areas of the form while it cured. And I could have used my drum sander to clean this up, but as I mentioned, this thing was incredibly difficult to handle on my own, and I was afraid I'd drop it or damage it in some way, so I called Forest Millwork, a local cabinet shop here in Asheville, and they agreed to flatten the slab on their wide belt sander for about 70 bucks, so I headed down to their shop. Their wide belt sander made really quick work of the slab, and the final result was really much better than I could have gotten doing this in my shop, and it was just well worth the investment to allow these guys to use their skills to save me a bunch of time and effort. Back in my shop, I sanded the slab with my random orbit sander to remove some of the lines left by the wide belt, starting with 80 grit and working my way up to 180 grit for the wood and 400 grit for the top of the epoxy. And I actually left the bottom side of the epoxy a little bit rougher, stopping at 120 grit just to diffuse the light a little bit more. Between grits, I wiped the piece down with mineral spirits to remove that epoxy dust, which really tends to cake up on the surface, 
and this also showed me where I needed to sand more. I also chamfered the edges of the piece using my router before the final sanding. This really gave the piece a nicely finished look. For the finish, I decided to use Rubio Monocoat, and this isn't a traditional film finish, so it didn't build up on the epoxy and was really easy to buff out. I mixed the two parts of the finish and then applied it, starting with the bottom. And I applied the finish pretty liberally, let it sit for about five minutes to react with the wood, and then buffed it out, removing any excess finish. And that was it. That's the beauty of this finish. You only need one coat. And I repeated the same process for the top of the piece. While I'm finishing, let's take a second to talk about one of the sponsors of this week's video, Squarespace. I've personally been using Squarespace for my website for about a year now, and I love it. Squarespace offers beautiful, award-winning templates, and their all-in-one platform makes it super easy to make your next move with Squarespace. There's nothing to install, update, or patch like some other web platforms, and their 24-7 customer support makes it super easy to get help if you need it. To make your next move with Squarespace, go to squarespace.com slash craftedworkshop to get a free trial and 10% off your first purchase. Thanks again to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. While the finish cured, I worked on the mounting mechanism for the headboard. I decided to keep it simple and just use a French cleat, and I decided on a 2x4 for this. I tilted the blade on my table saw to 45 degrees and ripped the 2x4 roughly down the center. And I wanted the headboard to be off the wall a little bit to allow those lights to diffuse behind the piece, so that was the reason I went with a 2x4. I attached the 2x4 to the back of the headboard using 2 inch screws, making sure to pre-drill and countersink the holes to keep the 2x4 from splitting. Next I started laying out the placement of the LED lights, and these lights are battery powered to avoid having any cables running behind the river section. So after laying out what I thought would be a good placement, I removed the adhesive backing from the strips and tried to stick the LED strips to the piece, only to find out that the finish I had applied was keeping the adhesive from sticking, especially when making turns with the strips. I used these little cable clips to permanently fasten the LED strips and they actually worked out great. I also made sure not to block any of the LEDs when attaching those clips. I just repeated the same process on the bottom half of the headboard, attaching a 2x4 so that the piece would be plumb when hanging on the wall, and then attaching the LED strips with the cable clips. Next I marked out the locations for the holes on the other half of the French cleat, the half that's attached to the wall. I used these ridiculously overkill 4.5 inch long construction screws to mount the French cleat to the wall, so I needed to drill holes big enough where these screws would pass through without splitting the 2x4 French cleat. I drilled these holes at the drill press just to make sure they were perfectly straight, but a handheld drill probably would have worked fine here. Next I marked out where the studs were on my wall and mounted the French cleat, making sure it was nice and level. And I realized how bowed this French cleat piece was during this process. I tried to clamp it to a level to straighten it out, but that didn't really work, but I eventually got it mounted to the wall. Finally I could mount the headboard on the wall and this project was done. All right, hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. I just love the way this piece came out. I think the LED lights just highlight that center river section perfectly. It's really cool that these lights change colors so I can kind of have different moods depending on how I feel. And they're both battery powered so there are no cords, nothing exposed, and I still have easy access to the battery compartments on the top edge and bottom edge of the slab. And I'm just really excited to see how these cherry slabs darken up over time. That's one of my favorite things about the river table I built a year ago is that that cherry has gotten a gorgeous color as it it's aged over the last year. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. If you don't already, go ahead and get subscribed to the channel. I put out new project videos like this pretty much every week. Also ring that little notification bell so you don't miss any of my new videos. Also, I have links to all the tools and materials down in the video description below in case you're interested in that. And last, I have revamped my Patreon page. I'm gonna start putting out a monthly behind the scenes video exclusive to my patrons. So hopefully you guys will go check that out, help to support the channel and help to support me. All right, thanks again for watching everybody. And until next week, happy building.